What's up guys? It's Wholesome Joe, and I just want to let you know that you're in your three. Six. No, not really. But let's talk about why people think that the Ender 3 is not a good printer in 2024, or why it might be a good printer in 2024. If you frequent the internet, or if you frequent any of the 3D printing groups online, specifically like Facebook groups and things like that, you'll see a lot of people talking about the Creality series of printers, Ender 3s, CR10s, but you'll also see people talking about the new Bamboo Labs printers. And a lot of people think that those printers are kind of just, you can just buy one, you don't need to have a whole lot of experience, and you can just get right to printing. And that definitely can be true, but I see people all the time in these 3D printing groups asking what printer they should start with. And up until probably recently, typically the answer would be Ender 3. And the reason for that is, is because one, the price point, they're very cheap, really easy to get. You can buy them all over the internet. You can buy them from Micro Center if you wanna pick one up in person. And because of the cost effectiveness, as well as the fact that there's a huge community of people that have all used them. And because for the price point, you can't really go wrong with the print quality. They can produce some really nice quality prints at a really low cost. So a lot of people start there. And I think the biggest benefit and what I think a lot of people miss when they recommend things like the bamboo printers, which are a lot more expensive, the, the prices are coming down some, but they're still a lot more expensive than buying just the bare bones Ender 3. The reason I suggest still in 2024 that the Ender 3 is still one of the better printers you can buy as a beginner is because when you're first starting out, even if you buy the most expensive printer in the world, you still need to know the fundamentals of how 3D printing works. And I think when you skip steps and buy the more expensive printers out of the gate without learning all of that stuff first, you kind of shoot yourself in the foot because eventually things are gonna break. Eventually you're gonna have to try to figure things out. And if you don't know the basics, then even if you have an expensive, you know, Bamboo Labs printer, and you know, Bamboo Labs, if you're watching this video and you wanna prove me wrong and you want to show me that your printers are dummy proof and easy mode and anyone can use them without any sort of experience and they don't need to learn all this stuff, let me know. I would love to try one of them out and, and, and you prove me wrong. But I would still say in 2024, I still recommend the Ender 3 to anyone that is starting out in 3D printing, especially for people who like to tinker and who want to learn all of the ins and outs of you know leveling your bed and getting all the settings correct and all the things that I really think that you should learn if you're trying to get into this hobby. Now, if you're just wanting to make a few things here and there and you don't really, you, you know, you just have one specific project you wanna work on and you aren't getting into 3D printing as a hobby or as like a business or something where you're going to be printing extensively, then yes, maybe something like the bamboo or even some, like a Prusa or something would be a little bit better for you because, and especially if you have the budget for those printers because they are a lot pricier. But you can get an Ender 3 now for like a hundred bucks and sometimes you can find them for even cheaper than that. So I always recommend Ender 3s to parents who are trying to get their kids printers. A lot of schools have them because they're, you know, the last generation's printer. They still produce amazing prints. I have two Ender 3s myself, they still print fine. Um, and I don't even have a lot of upgrades. A lot of people, you know, they, this is another thing that I say, see people do all the time is when they have issues with their printers, they just immediately start upgrading things. And they don't understand why they're making the upgrades. They're just making upgrades because someone said, change this. And it, that doesn't, that's never made any sense to me because both of my Ender 3s are stock with the exception of the things that you're going to have to replace eventually, regardless of what printer you get like the nozzles and sometimes the Bowden tubes when those get clogged, you're gonna have to replace those eventually. And most and most of these printers, you're gonna have to replace the hot end eventually. Um, should you have to do it right out of the gate? No. And there's things that you can upgrade on Ender 3s to make them nicer printers. And you can do those things out of the gate if you want to, but I have printed on both of mine for two or three years and I've literally only changed the nozzle and the Bowden tube and I have changed the hot end on one of them. And that was just because of a mistake that I made and not because the, of the printer. So once you get your bearings and you learn all of the ins and outs of how the 3D printers work, 
any of the higher end printers that you might get down the line are going to be so much easier to use and you're going to know so much more about it and you're going to be able to fix any problems that are that come your way because you've already learned all of that stuff on a i won't say more difficult printer but a printer that's going to require a little bit more know-how to use to get quality prints. So when you move up to something like a bamboo, you're gonna be so knowledgeable about 3D printers that it's gonna be super easy mode. And that's what I really recommend, especially if you wanna get into this hobby. It's kinda of like playing guitar. I play guitar, I play guitar for like 15 years. And I wouldn't recommend somebody go out and buy a Paul Reed Smith or a Gibson Les Paul if all they wanna do is learn how to play guitar. Um, because it's overkill and they don't even know if they'll they like it, they'll like it yet, and they don't even know if they're gonna stick with it. So I always recommend trying to, to learn on something cheaper and maybe something a little bit more difficult because like if you can get through the hurdles of learning that on a cheaper, less high-end instrument, you're probably more likely to stick to it than if you buy something really expensive and then you're like, oh, I don't really wanna do this. So Ender 3s, I still recommend them in 2024. They don't suck at all. They're really good printers. I would buy one today if one came up because like I said, mine work flawlessly most of the time. And I've learned so much about 3D printing in general just from tinkering with them. You may disagree with me and that's totally fine. Again, Bamboo Labs, if you're watching this, send me one of your printers. Let me, let me take a look at it and I will let you know whether I think that you should uh, skip the Ender 3s and all of the other lower uh, price printers in exchange for the higher, you know, higher budget printers that don't require as much effort to use. So yeah, let me know what you think. Do you have an Ender 3? Do you still print with your Ender 3? What other low budget or lower end printers do you think are still worth using in 2024 and beyond? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more 3D printing videos, more cosplay videos, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so you get all the updates on my content. Until next time, happy printing.